Hi, Sherry here from On Point. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you some tools that I feel are super important for you to have in your toolbox in order to ensure that your haircutting um, abilities and skills and all those haircuts come out awesome. I've been cutting hair for a really long time, so the scissors that I'm sharing with you today, they are the, the links, the sizes, um, the brand, um, they are ones that um, I have used for many years and found much success with. So, the first shear I want to share with you is every stylist should have a pair of shears that's good for all around layering, just your basic cutting. Um, I like to use a five and a half inch blade. That's what's comfortable for my hand. If you have a smaller hand, you might want to have a, a shorter blade. You just have to decide what's comfortable for you. And when you pick up pick, um, your scissors, I like to think of them as an extension of your hand. So you wanna make sure that whatever shears you choose, that they feel super comfortable in your hand. These are a shear that has, the, the, the brand by the way is Hiroki. I will put a link on how you can get your own pair. Um, if you're interested or just to learn about it in the show notes, all right? So anyways, I like a blade that is not too pointy on the ends for all around layering. A five, like I said, again, a five and a half inch blade. Also, um, the, you wanna look for the little area there, the little screw there, that how easy is it to tighten and loosen the blade. Um, I like to have a tang for my finger. That doesn't mean that you have to, but I find it um, very beneficial for me on the comfort of my um, my hand and when I'm cutting. It kind of helps me so that all when I'm cutting, all that really when you're when you're cutting hair, you should only be moving your thumb when you're cutting, opening and closing with both finger both sides of your hands um, is not good for the wrist. It's not good for your your fingers. Um, it's not good for the accuracy of your haircut as well. So having a tang, I think, is super important. So yes, a good all-around shear to start. Second type of shear that I wanna share with you is a shear that, that has got a little bit of a, more of a point on the end. See how much uh, pointier these are? And the blades are a little bit skinnier. This is my favorite shear that I use for all the little details when I'm cutting short hair. I tend to, on my haircuts when I'm cutting short hair, uh, I, I tend to create a lot of pieciness. Sometimes I just wanna see really, you know, kind of a chunkiness to it, a lot of texture to it. Um, I personally do a lot of dry cutting and uh, it's really important when you're doing dry cutting that you have a blade that is pointier on the ends. Because usually when you're dry cutting, you're using it you know, you're doing a lot of point cutting, you're doing a lot of removing of weight, you might do a little bit of some walking of the shears. But um, yes, it's good to have a blade that is a little bit pointier to give you um, just, it helps you on being able to be more creative in your hair cutting, being able to create and fine tune those short haircuts and to do your dry cutting. It'll make it a lot easier. A third type of blade that I recommend having in your toolbox is a long blade. This is a six and a half inch shear, and I recommend using this on your bob cuts. You know, bob cuts for me have always been a challenge. Um, and I found when I was being mentored, when uh, my mentor shared with me, you know, start using a longer blade when you're cutting it's going to ensure that your line is more accurate because you're only opening and closing the blade one time versus on a, on a shorter blade, you're gonna be opening two or three times. So less room for error. So anyways, this is a great blade for cutting your bobs and I like to use it when I'm cutting men's haircuts because men's haircuts are always usually square, right? So when I'm layering those men's haircuts, having a blade that's six and a half inches long 
I'm gonna get a nice straight line with it. There is no, you can't cur curve the blade. Same as when I'm pulling it up straight out from the head and using um, the long blade, it just gives me a nice um, flat surface that I'm cutting. So a six and a half inch blade, it's kind of weird to get used to it first, but um, I just encourage you to try it because it'll make a big difference in your, um, in your cleanup work on your bobs and on your men's haircuts, okay? So that's it for the straight blades. I also recommend getting a blade, a texturizing um, shear. I usually have two or uh, three different um, teeth size in as a texturizing shear. So like if I put this up close, you can see the, 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 um, the teeth here. The wider the teeth, the more, um, sep you know, it's, it's gonna be, it's great for like um, breaking up the hair. The more teeth that's there, the more hair that's gonna come out and the finer it's gonna look. So for example, when I'm working on somebody with really fine hair, I'm gonna use a texturizing shear that the teeth are a lot closer together because it, it's, it's gonna be a lot, um, it, it's gonna, it's a lot finer tool to use. In other words, it's not gonna, you're not gonna see the lines of your, of your cut marks. Sometimes on fine hair or, or that color of hair that's like um, kind of a blonde or dark blonde and it's really straight and it shows every cut line. Using a texturizing shear that has a little bit of teeth that's a little bit closer together, it really makes it, um, those layers invisible. It just removes any lines that show. Um, I like to use this particular one that's a little bit wider when I'm going in and I'm removing bulk or I want to create a little bit of support within my haircut. Also, I like to use this one as well. Sometimes I'll just do a scissor over comb when I'm removing length um, on some of my short hair clients that don't want to have it looking so harsh like a clipper cut does. Using one of these shears, scissor over comb with it, just keep opening and closing it, creates it, you can cut it really, really tight against the, the head and the neck, but it leaves it really soft. And then thirdly, there's another type where it's just really, it's, it's a real chunky blade, meaning that there's just a, a, wide, um, a wide amount of space in between each tooth. I don't have one in my toolbox because I choose to use my, um, my pointier detailing shear to kind of notch out uh, the hair that I want to remove. But they, are, they do have one, they usually call them a channel, um, channel cutting, if you've ever heard that. But they just have a, a, wider, a wider space in between the teeth. So you're just cutting a big chunk, big chunks in between and leaving longer pieces. Um, it's kind of a personal preference, but personally, at least have a texturizing shear about this size. If you can only have one pair, it would be great in your toolbox. So that's for shears. One last thing that I recommend when cutting hair to have um, in your toolbox is a razor. Um, I will be doing a video Actually, I'm gonna do a couple of videos on how to use a razor and how to cut a razor, cut with a razor because I feel like being able to cut hair with a razor is such a skill that's needed because some of those haircuts, like for instance, um, coarse hair. So like if you think about maybe Asian hair or Indian hair, um, the hair is just like really straight and each hair shaft is really thick. And using a blunt blade on that type of hair, it doesn't create softness. And sometimes when, a, when that type of a, a client that has that type of texture of hair, they wanna have a beautiful, soft, short haircut or some, some nice shagginess to their haircut, it's very difficult to create while using just a blunt blade. If you can master using a razor, it's like carving. The only thing I can think of to kind of help you understand it is like, have you ever like taken a piece of soap when you were a kid and you had a knife and just kind of carved a shape out of it? It's kind of the same thing. When you use a razor, you're literally just kind of 
kind of carving out the shape um, of the, the haircut that you're wanting to create. So the ends of the hair, instead of them being blunt, you're kind of creating kind of a soft taper to it. So it, it creates a really soft um, perimeter, a really soft um, edge on the hair. And it encourages the hair to move a little bit. But we'll do, I'll, I'll definitely um, do a video on that for you as well. But I do think it's important to have this in your toolbox. The last two things that I want to share with you that I think are so important is the right kind of comb and clips. The first I'm going to share with you is the comb. Okay. These as well, I will share with you in the show notes as well on how to get them. I, I personally really love love these combs. These are actually by a company called Jacqueline Pro. And um, I like them for two reasons. First of all, you see this little guy up here? That's great for making clean partings. I know a lot of us hairstylists struggle with getting a really clean parting. And that makes it so much easier. But the main thing you want to look for in a comb is you want to make sure that it has one side has um, the fine teeth and one side has some that are a little bit wider. And I'm going to move over here so you can kind of see it a little bit better and bring it a little bit closer. You want to make sure that your the fine teeth is so that when you're cutting, you're able to have tension on the hair. And then the wider teeth, that's when you're cutting thicker hair, um, or curly hair, you want to have the teeth wider so that you can kind of let the hair talk to you and see how it's going to move, uh, especially with curly hair or if you're working in the nape area and there's a lot of movement or the crown area, you, you don't want to have too much tension on the hair. You want to be able to let the hair talk to you a little bit and that's where this help, helps. But you want to make sure it's not so wide apart that you can't control the hair at all. I like to, I also recommend having a large comb like this. This is awesome for your long haired clients uh, that you're working with that have really thick hair. It's nice to have a, a thicker, more solid, sturdy comb for that. But also having this when you're dry cutting long hair is awesome. Again, I will uh, make sure I put the link in the show notes, okay? And last but not least, and one of the most important things that you need to have is a good clip. I don't recommend using uh, the big uh, crocodile clips because they get messy in the hair and they don't hold it really tight. Um, having, uh, and they also get in the way of your cutting. So these are by Framar. Again, I'll um, attach it in the link notes, but these are by Framar and these are by far my favorite. You can see it's really easy to, to grab it because sometimes our hands are wet when we're getting, when we're parting off and sectioning and it's easy to, you know, some of the ductile um, clips that it's real skinny and my, your hands slip off and this has a nice round edge, easy to grip, but it's, it, it grips the hair really tight. So when you're sectioning off, especially when you're working with shorter hair or really fine hair, it's really frustrating to have the hair keep falling out of the clips or the clips are so bulky they get in the way. These are perfect for that. So, so that is it on the tools that I think are super important for you to have in your tool chest. And let me review. Scissors, it's important to have just a good all around shear for all your layering that fits comfortably in your hand. For myself, it's about a five to five and a half inch blade. Then having another blade that is pointier, like this one, so that, you're, that you can do all your detail work and it's great for dry cutting and your point cutting. And then another shear to have is a longer blade, a six and a half inch blade. Super great for those bobs and for those men's haircuts that you really want that nice square um, layer two. And also you want to have a good texturizing shear. Okay. And then a razor. Don't be afraid of that razor. It's good to have it. I also forgot to say too, it's great for cleaning up the neck. Um, cause sometimes the clippers, it just doesn't do it tight enough and having a feather razor to clean it up a little tighter really, um, really makes a big difference. Your customers will notice. And then picking up with proper comb, 
and the proper clips. I just want to thank you so much for watching and hey, if you loved this, um, this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and you know what? Share it with somebody that you think might benefit from this video. Thank you so much for watching and I just want you to always remember your work is not about you, it's about how you make your clients feel. Happy haircutting!